what's up welcome back to my channel so today it is Friday and that means we're gonna turn up with another story time I hope you guys are so excited I'm just excited to just be doing exactly what I love to be doing and if you guys don't know already your girl just got a brand new computer if you guys know anything about me you already know that I have been complaining so much about my computer because it was just it was just failing me girl all the way around like all the way around the world and back okay so i finally got myself a new computer which means that i can edit faster and i can do my job faster and more videos for y'all so i'm so excited i hope you guys are too before we get into this video definitely make sure that you hit that big red subscribe button to be subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any videos including story times that i put up here on my channel every single week um uh, today's story time is going to be something a little bit unorthodox and just like real I don't know ratchet but it's y'all's favorite types of story which is like the ratchet kind of stories um, and this is actually going to be taking place at a church camp of all places so I hope you guys are ready to hear it definitely get your wine and get your snacks girl because we're about to turn up for story time so before we get into this video I just wanted to share something that I've been really really into lately you guys know that I am a pretty stressed out person I always have a lot going on a lot in my life a lot going on in my head I don't know how to quiet my brain you know what I'm saying so sometimes I need some Something to kind of distract me and as of lately I have been so obsessed with this game called homescapes you guys hold up wait a minute let me just talk to you for a second okay so this app is completely free to download as per use because y'all already know your girl be balling on a budget but it is called homescapes and this entire game is so up my alley you guys you guys already know that I moved into my new house recently this past July and there are some rooms in the house that still need to be furnished and I'm like working on it plus we're gonna get wedding gifts and stuff like that right so this is actually a puzzle solving game like it's swapping and matching you can get power-ups and it's a simple gameplay all you have to do is just beat the levels earn stars your stars kind of equal money and it goes towards renovating the house okay there's some really cute characters in this game basically what he's doing is he's trying to help out his parents and he's renovating the entire house I don't know what it is about this game you guys but I am so obsessed with it and I am like getting through levels like nobody's business I've already renovated the room the living room the staircase you guys I'm so obsessed obsessed with it and I just feel like I need to finish the entire house. First I need to match these things together and once I get all of this stuff matched up I get money and the money goes towards me renovating my house and I'm already done with my room and now I'm working on my hallway and in like in the main entrance so it's really important because it's the first thing that people see when they walk into the house so you know I gotta get on my grind and you know make shit happen. She's been playing this all day. If you want to check it out, it's completely free. You have nothing to lose. And you can just try it out and see if it's your judge, okay? If you guys are interested in checking it out, just head to my description box down below and you guys can see the links that will take you directly to the App Store and you can download it for free right now just to try it out and let me know your thoughts. As usual, before we get into today's story time, today's glamour shot of the day is my gorgeous Glamazon Vanessa. You look so amazing. You're so gorgeous. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to take this beautiful picture and to send it over to me so I can see your gorgeous face. Thank you so much for loving me and supporting me and all of you guys just going so hard for me and just supporting me throughout this entire journey. I really appreciate it and you guys know that I would not be here without you and I could not do this without each and every one of you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now let's get into the story time, girl. So as you guys can tell by the title of this video, this video is going to be about a fight that I had at a church camp of all places, okay? You guys already know my stories always have a little bit of a twist to it. So if you guys are interested in hearing uh, how sweet little old Nikki at church camp could get into a fight, please keep on watching. Are you guys feeling my braid? I hope you guys are because this is what I do when I don't feel like washing my hair, so I hope it's flying. So I was like 10 years old and I've said this time and time again and I don't know if you guys understand the severity of the situation, but your girl was a complete nerd when I was younger and like not in the sense of just like, I don't know, reading and being into academics, but just genuinely, I was just socially awkward and I didn't know how to make friendships. I didn't know how to converse with people. I didn't know how to 
talk to my peers. I didn't know how to socialize. I was like the most awkward person in the entire world. I know it's super hard to imagine, right? <laughs> I'm still super, super awkward. Like even now, if I don't watch myself anyway, so I was 10 years old and you know, up until this point, I was still very quiet. I was an introvert. I didn't really talk to many people. I read a lot. I was really into my academics and I don't know, man. I just, I feel like I got made fun of a lot when I was a kid, which I feel like gave me tough skin now. But because I got made fun of so much back then, I didn't want to talk to nobody, okay? Everybody was mean as fuck. Because I was so socially awkward and because I wasn't like, you know, conversing with other kids my age, my mom always had an eye on me and she made sure that I like got involved. She was the one who made me try out for cheerleading. She would always be the one to tell me to join clubs. So I grew up Christian. I grew up in the Christian church. I grew up in the church. I was singing in the church at like three years old. So we went to this church and we, you know, it was like our family church. Like all of us went there, right? And I just really, honestly, you guys, I just did not, I mean, I don't know how else to put this besides just saying I didn't have no friends. Like, I, it sounds so sad, but I really didn't. So this story took place during the summer. So especially in the summer, I didn't talk to nobody. Back then, we didn't have cell phones. And like after school let out, peace out. Like I ain't, I ain't about to be talking to you. I'm going to go read a book in my tree. Like that's just exactly how I was. Like the minute school was out, I was like, all right, peace. This church was not a little bitty church, okay? It was a big church. And I always stayed in the main sanctuary with my grandma and with my mom. I was not about to mess with you. I was not about to go and be with all the other teenagers because I was just so scared of being made fun of and being the outcast because I already knew that I was awkward. So like I just stayed in my comfort zone, right? So fast forward and I want to say that this was like in the beginning of June, all right? And we were going to church and our pastor had announced that they were taking enrollment for the summer camp that the church was having, right? It was, if I remember correctly, it was a week long summer camp, like full seven days. And we were going to be going like, I don't know, it was like two, three hours away. And it was like this big campus pretty much. And so the pastor was up there and he was like, yeah, you know, the youth group preparing to go on their annual summer camp trip you know if you want your kids to go and roll them now blah 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 this is how much it is whatever whatever right so I remember hearing that in church and I was like <laughs> it just went right over my head I was like okay and fast forward a few hours and I go home and my mom decides to talk to me that night and she asks me if I'm interested in going to this camp and I was real AF no no no, I'm not. I'm, I have no interest. Absolutely none. And at this point, you guys, I had never been to camp. I had never left essentially with strangers. Like I had never done that. So I was like, wait, hold up. What do you mean? Like, no, I'm not interested. What you mean? We start talking about it and I'm like fighting her on it. And I'm like, mm, no, like I don't really know anybody. I haven't gone to like the youth group. I didn't make any friends. Like kind of went back and forth about it. And then she played the mom card and said, I am your mother, you're going. Uh, huh? What? All of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's decided your girl is going to camp. You guys, the minute that my mom told me that I had to go, like it wasn't even an option. It wasn't, hey, think about it. Let me know how you're feeling. No, it was, you're going. Like she was like, you need to stop isolating yourself what you're doing it's not healthy for you and you need to go talk to kids your age and like learn how to socialize and I was like mom I have made it this far like I was acing school I was like I don't understand why I need friends like why I need friends like I'm team no friends next thing I know my mom's over at Walmart buying me a sleeping bag and all kinds of other toiletries and shit for me to go to camp and this entire time you guys I'm so booty tight and so nervous because I'm about to go out of town with a bunch of strangers I have no friends I don't know anybody and like I'm so nervous fast forward about a week and the day comes that my mom has to drop me off at the butt crack of dawn at the church and you guys we get there and it's like hundreds of kids it's like so many minivans and so many parents just dropping off their kids a bunch of kids with sleeping bags and a bunch of pillows and just it's chaos okay my mom pulls up to the church and I'm just sitting there looking at all these people and I was like mom please she was like come on go like I'm not I'm not going to baby you you're going so like she basically you know <clears throat> got me off the car and all of a sudden I noticed that my mom 
is getting out of the car as well. And I was under the impression that this is just like a drop off situation and my mama don't need to be getting out the car, but for some reason she's getting out the car. She locates the youth pastor. She heads right towards him. She goes to the youth pastor and she basically tells him all my business, okay? And she was like, look, Nikki is very, very shy and she's very nervous and she needs help making friends. You guys, I'm not even kidding. My mom was like, yes, my daughter needs help. So help her make some friends. Oh my God. I was literally fighting every inch of my soul to stand there and to go through with this because I, everything in me just wanted to take off running and go home. Like I'm not even kidding. So she says bye and I literally watch her drive away and now I'm just standing in the midst of a sea of kids. So I kind of like stand off to the side and people are just getting onto buses, but I don't know where that bus is going. So like, how, what is the process and the system here? Like, I don't know. I'm like trying to stay close to the youth pastor and he's like busy trying to help people. And I'm just awkwardly standing there, you guys. Like I did not know how to just take over my own life, okay? I was just standing there like a lost little puppy. He had no idea that I was like, trying to get direction from him because again I was very awkward and I didn't even know how to ask him like I didn't even know how to go to him and be like hey now what do I do where do I go how does this work like you need to help me like I could not say that so like I was just so fucking shy and like it, it was just really annoying how shy I was like it was just ridiculous okay it held me back from a lot finally it's time for us to leave and at this point all of the buses have been filled and took off and so have all the vans okay only people that were left were myself and like four other girls there was a woman she was like in her mid to late 20s and she worked with the youth group and she was going to be driving her car to the actual campsite so she was like you know what why don't you guys just ride with me i literally read for the rest of the drive over there i read one of my books and i just minded my own business and i didn't talk to anybody which was the biggest mistake for me like i really should have tried more fast forward about two hours and we finally get to the campsite and you guys first of all it is in texas so it literally was booty ass hot outside okay i'm talking about like 100 degree weather I see the youth pastor and a few other adults like handing out these slips right it's like a little slip and it tells you what building you're in and what bed you're in right they have like big numbers outside of the building so it was super easy to find so there i go i start heading over to this building you guys and the closer i'm getting like the more anxious i'm getting and now i'm like oh my god like i'm literally gonna have to spend the night with these girls like i just oh my god you guys like this was i can't seem to put it into words it wasn't just that i was awkward it was also you guys i didn't grow up with girls like i had girl cousins but they honestly lived in arkansas for most of my life like i really didn't get to know my cousins it was always around boys like my boy cousins and my brother and my uncle and so i was just constantly around boys you guys i'm i didn't know how to talk to girls you guys i did not talk about like nail polish or boys or like dresses i didn't dress up mm -mm. i was literally in basketball shorts and a t-shirt hunty like, it wasn't a cabin it was like a building all right so when you walked in it had like a warehouse kind of like door it was like a metal door and you walk in and the first thing you see is the bathrooms and it looks like a regular locker room bathroom with a bunch of stalls and a bunch of sinks to the right you see a bunch of bunk beds and then to the left you see a bunch of bunk beds each room could fit i want to say between like 14 to 16 girls because of the bunk beds so you had 16 and 16 right especially when you're going through puberty you put that many girls together mm, something's about to go down there are girls running in and out of the bathroom there's bags everywhere clothes everywhere everyone's unpacking and laughing and taking pictures I find my bunk I set my stuff down and I kind of start putting things away and I'm trying to occupy myself and everyone around me you guys is just like living their life and having so much fun like you can hear all of them laughing tell pretty much that most of these girls already knew each other and we're just so happy to see each other and it just really made me feel really left out because I just didn't know anybody camp counselor she was like our personal like counselor of the building to like look after us and we had two one for each side of the building right we'll call her Samantha 
So Samantha was like the camp counselor of our building and she was a few years older than us as per usual. And she came and she kind of interrupted me and she was like, hey, you know, are you Nikki? And I said, yeah. And she was like, we're actually about to head out to go to the cafeteria for lunch. It's lunchtime. You should probably come too if you want to eat. And I was like, oh, okay. So like she said that and she was like, okay. Bye. Now I got extra nervous about this part because you guys all know that lunchtime is like the most ridiculously like nerve wracking experience ever. If you don't have friends to sit with, like what the hell are you supposed to do, right? It's just like groups, like a group of four and then a group of six and like just like groups of girls and like they're all friends and then you just see Nikki walking behind all of them solo and I saw a table and it was like a table of like eight chairs but only I want to say like four or five girls were sitting there. I'm so nervous and my heart's beating like a million miles a minute. Like, hey, um, can I sit here? And they were like, yeah, sit down my tray and I sit down and they keep having the conversation that they were having. So I'm just like, you know, kind of listening and eating and, you know, just trying to put like myself in the conversation, but I don't know how to because they ain't talking to me. You know what I'm saying? I never did. It just would not come out of my mouth. And so I'm just sitting there all awkward, just watching their entire combo and like not saying anything because I'm scared. I failed you guys I was so mad at myself and I failed the entire lunchtime went by and I did not talk to these girls because I was too scared and I don't know why I don't know what was wrong with me so I head back over and again it's just going from one awkward situation to the other to the other to the other and I I'm just seriously trying to survive at this point they had an itinerary of sorts like a schedule and every day we had to go to that church twice a day once in the morning and then once at night to do like praise and worship and they'd have like video games they'd have like bands up there that night went okay you know like it was just like praise and worship fast forward to the next day and in the morning here we go we go back to the cafeteria hall and we have breakfast and I I ended up sitting with the same girls that I sat with for lunch. This is day two, okay? So I had breakfast, and then after that, it's just like a bunch of activities, you guys. Like, they had, like, they split you up into teams, like, color teams, and I was, like, on the red team, and then there was, like, black team and orange team and, like, all these other teams. You're competing for points. So, like, they basically give you guys tasks to do around the campsite and, like, you know, scavenger hunts and things like that. We went swimming in the lake for a little bit and then we went to go play volleyball, right? I get through the first half of my second day and still, you guys, I legit have not made one friend. I have not cultivated any relationships. I haven't talked to anybody and I just, as each hour is passing, I'm just feeling less and less comfortable and I just want to go home. As I went back to the room and I knocked out like I was just I was out like a light fast forward and the third day comes around morning and it's like a routine every day is exactly the same this is my third day and I'm going to breakfast and I don't know if like the girls that I usually sat with like had already eaten I don't know but they just weren't there and so this was the first time that I actually had to eat by myself and I remember this because I was so embarrassed and I was like at a table legit by myself <laughs> I'm so sorry if I'm like depressing y'all and this is like such a heavy video, but it, it is a part of the story and just wait for it, okay? Because shit's about to get real. So I did meet a boy that day and I was like 10 and this boy was like 16. Like I remember he was like 16. I will tell you guys about that boy in another video, okay? But I did meet a boy and he was the only person that talked to me and gave me the time of day and he ended up sitting next to me. After my conversation with that boy, you guys already know that once like, you know, a boy, especially when you feel that bad about yourself, once like a boy shows you attention, it like does this weird thing to you and all of a sudden you're like, yes bitch, like I am that one, okay? It improved my mood and so I was like, you know what, maybe maybe it's not going to be so bad. Like I was able to have this long ass conversation with this boy and I've never been able to do that. So like maybe I'm getting better at this. Like maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel, right? So fast forward. Now we're going to go into the next day. Now this is the fourth day of me being at camp, okay? 
So I go on to the next day and for some reason the girl was feeling a little bit more confident, okay? And I kind of got this mentality like, you know what? No, I'm going to actually go out there and make some friends. So breakfast came around and I went to the cafeteria and I saw this girl and she had a bunk bed that was like literally right next to mine. And I saw her every night. And so I saw her in the cafeteria and she was sitting with like two other girls and I brought my tray. All of a sudden she and I started talking and like really carrying a conversation. And then some of her friends were jumping in and you guys for the first time. I started feeling like I belonged and I started feeling like I'm normal. I got to know her and I got to know her friends and so boom all of a sudden I know like three four girls and so we leave the cafeteria together. Everyone grab snacks because things are about to get a little bit cray. We were having like some special concert going on and it was gonna last a lot longer than our normal praise and worship time. Just kids piling into this building. The way they had it set up in that building was really like a church. It was like rows and rows and rows of chairs and so you know we picked some chairs and we sat down that place was even more popping than the club that I met David in. I'm not even kidding okay like strobe lights and like you know this band up there and like live music and it was so much fun I'm in like this row with my friend and then in the row in front of me I just see this kid by himself and you know, ever since I was a kid, because I went through that, I hate seeing people by themselves. Like, it just really makes me sad. I saw this boy by himself, literally directly in front of me. Like, the back of his head was, like, right here. I kept talking to my friend, and, like, the music's going on. And then, out of nowhere, I just see his shoulders, like, doing one of these. And I was like, what the hell? And I was like, is he dancing? And he's like, his shoulders, like, kind of going like this. This kid is crying. Like, he is bawling his eyes out this was like a heartfelt like i don't know what this kid was going through but whatever it was man like it was so deep and heavy and it was just like you could literally feel it i could not believe that i was doing this but my ass got up and i got out of like the aisle and i went into his aisle and I sat down right next to him. All I knew to do was just to pray for him. Like, honestly, like, what else do you do when somebody is in that much pain? And, like, you can't understand them on a verbal level, but you can feel them, like, on a spiritual level. Like, that's kind of how it was. Like, this kid was a complete stranger to me, but, like... I could not see him cry like that like it was just crazy and so we were taught to pray over one another and so out of nowhere you guys I put my hand on his shoulder and I just started praying for him out loud and I was just like praying for him and like praying for peace and for his heart to be calm or whatever and you know I'm literally praying out loud I had his my hand on his shoulder and he put his hand over my wrist not even over my hand it wasn't anything like that he just put it like he put it like my hand was like right here and he put it over my wrist and he like bowed his head and he was praying with me as youth like just praying over one another exactly what we had been taught to do okay friend the one that i was talking to she came around the other side and sat on the other side of him put her hand on his shoulder and started praying as well so here we go we're it's all three of us to this day i don't even know what that kid's name was okay like that's how much we didn't talk <laughs> out of nowhere this blonde girl storms up to us who are they and like she was just so fucking rude and so i'm sitting there and i'm like what um i got him he doesn't need help thank you thank you and she like started like shooing us like going like this and i was like now at this time obviously you know i'm still trying to find myself and i wasn't the nikki that i am today back then like to be looking at her like bitch what so i was like oh oh okay you know like i was like oh okay and she was like okay bye like he doesn't need y'all's help like i got him thank you bye like she was like very fucking rude we go back to our seats and we're literally sitting directly behind them and you guys she just keeps looking back and giving me the dirtiest look not even the friend not even the other girl that was with me me just me and she she was like uh like she just kept like looking back at me and like giving me the worst stank face and i was like 
what did I do? Like, what the hell? The whole little concert ends and we have to go back to our rooms, right? And me and the girl that I was hanging out with, we were telling like the other girls, you know, we, hey, you know, yeah, you know, we prayed over this kid and, you know, this is what we were doing and we're so proud of ourselves and like it was such a great moment and whatever, whatever. You know, like I said, this is a Christian church. So like everybody was like trying to do the Christian thing, right? Every night, like we would have like some arts and crafts thing to do or like they would always have like something small for us to do like before bed our camp counselor got us all together and it's like 15 of us like it's a good chunk of us okay I just remember us like sitting around in this circle and we were like working on something arts and crafts related I don't remember exactly what you know did you help anybody today did you pray over anyone today like did you do God's work today pretty much like that's basically what she was asking and so everybody was like going around and like telling their stories about oh you know I prayed for so and so or oh like we had this moment and it was great or whatever telling her the story right and everyone's listening and out of nowhere the same girl you guys I didn't even see her I didn't even notice her out of nowhere she goes um he really wasn't going through that much he didn't really need prayer it was like one of the first times that I was like, ooh, she don't like me and I don't like her. Is So like, I didn't say anything else. So I was like, you know what? She wants to be mad. Fine. I won't talk about your little boyfriend that needed prayer and you're over there lollygagging around with your friends. I decided to pray for him. Like, I don't understand what the problem is. Thank God she like sleeps on the other side of the room. So like, I didn't have to come into contact with her for the rest of the night. It had gone back out to the lake and right by the lake is where like the volleyball court is. And I love volleyball. Like, girl I can play some volleyball all right but I'm playing I would say like maybe like an hour went by and then out of nowhere I look up and on the other side of the net is the girl that got a problem with me so we're gonna name her like Lisa okay her name is Lisa and I'm like since when and why and like she never played volleyball like since the day I got there so I was like why are you here like why am I all of a sudden seeing you all the time like girl I didn't even know that you even existed before that like what the hell every time she's hitting the ball she's like spiking it and she's like literally trying to hit the fuck out of me like in my face Every time I turn around, the ball's like coming my way and like it's like fucking beaming at me and it's from her. I mean, even back then, you could only test me so much. She had on these like super tiny little bitty ass booty shorts and you know, it's Texas. It's hot as hell outside. She had just like gotten out of the lake not too long before that. So like her hair was still wet. Her skin was still kind of wet. And oh, um, not going to lie, we we start playing right, and you know the the volleyball's up in the air, and I go and I hit that shit with all my might, and I was not aiming for her face, and I did not hit her in the face. I hit her in the thigh, just slapped the shit out of her thigh, like because you know she had the booty shorts on and stuff, trying to look cute, and like I hit that ball so hard, it's here. You just hear just a slap. Oh, you guys, like everybody just stopped. And she ends up disappearing. I don't know if she like went to the nurse because like she was just crying about it or whatever, but she ended up disappearing. So she wasn't like playing anymore. And we were gonna go to the lake one last time before having to leave the next day. Now that I have friends and stuff, my friends wanted to like try the blob, right? But we go out to the lake and we stand in line for the blob because there was like a line. Everybody loved that thing. Finally, it's my turn, right? So there was a kid at the end of the blob, so I just jump onto the blob and he goes flying and so then I have to crawl to the end of it so that somebody else can jump and I go flying right I'm literally in the process of like on all fours on this blob if you guys don't know what I'm talking about I will leave a picture of a similar one right here and it's like basically like a big balloon kind of you guys this thing is huge so it takes a minute to get down to the end so I'm like crawling on all fours out of nowhere you guys my body just levitates into the air and goes sideways okay like off the side of the blob and I like kind of like roll off the side and I had no idea what the hell was going on I didn't like see it coming usually they would be like all right you ready and like you like do a thumbs up and then they'll jump but like this came out of nowhere so like my ass just kind of like I went up and then I like rolled off and it really sucked and it really hurt I, like go crashing into the water I come up and I see that holy on the blob 
because she had jumped onto it. She like ran up on everybody and cut the person that was in line just to fucking embarrass me, just to put me in the water. And she jumped on the blob before I was even ready and boom, there I go into the water. I'm swimming out and the whole time I'm just keeping eye contact with her like I know you did not. I know you did not wait until I get out of this goddamn water. I bend down just a little, grab a handful of sand. She started like talking to her friends. So when I got out of the lake, her back was towards me, okay? Like she was so fucking rude. Threw that ball of sand with all of my might, okay? And because of the water, it really balled up. It hit her right smack dab in the back of her head. Like you just see the sand all up in her hair and her head just went boom. She like grabbed onto the back of her head and she felt the sand and she goes, what the hell? And she looked back and she goes, you threw sand at me? I was like, yeah, I threw sand at you. And like, I was like mocking her. Like I really was. All of a sudden here comes my camp counselor and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get in trouble. Oh my God, they're going to tell my mom. Like I literally am about to get in trouble for fighting at church camp. Like what the fuck? It's all in my hair. I was like, bitch, just jump into the lake. It's just sand. What do you mean? So my camp counselor comes over and she was like, let's go for a walk and I was like oh shit so like I told her everything that happened and I was like look I just got really mad and I know that I wasn't supposed to do that my camp counselor was an OG okay she didn't tell anybody she didn't tell the pastor she didn't tell anybody and so when she got back to the room and saw me you guys she was so pissed and I was like hey girl hey how's your head oh okay I don't think that she would have been the type of person to fight me she could tell that she probably had never been in a fight in her life like uh, yeah that is the story about the time that I had had a fight at church camp. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up to let me know. It helps me out a lot. Also, give me a thumbs up for more story times if you guys are enjoying them. And please don't forget to hit that huge red subscribe button to be subscribed to my channel and be a part of my Glamazon family. I would love to have you. And there will be more story times and more videos coming your way really, really soon. So don't miss out. Also, before you guys leave, if you guys are interested in trying Homescapes, I promise you will not be sorry. You guys are going to enjoy it. Definitely check out the description bar below to download it for free on your Android or on your iPhone. If you do, please don't forget to let me know your thoughts, what level you're on, and what you think of the game because I personally really like it and it just, I don't know, it just does something for me, girl. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I love you guys and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out.